From the experience we've had with the flare and the uh, port entry fitting and the assembly experiences, the testing experiences we've had, it became obvious that the same technology could be incorporated in other areas. Um, and during our visits to uh, corporations in the industry, uh, we have uh, uncovered a number of other environments where the technology is very relevant. Now, the first of those that I want to talk about is the uh, environment where banjos are used. Very basically, a banjo is a two-part uh, fitting which allows for the transmission of fluid under pressure through a 90-degree change in direction. The fluid would come in through any one of these ports here, any number of uh, uh, supplies of fluid could be uh, incorporated in one banjo fitting, but normally there would be one source of uh, supply. The fluid comes in through that source of supply into the chamber of the fitting. Inside the chamber of the fitting is the bolt. The bolt has a cross hole in it. Here's the cross hole and a through bore which meets the cross hole. So when this is assembled, the fluid comes in through the port into the chamber through the cross hole and out here having turned through 90 degrees. Now if we separate the fitting, I'll put the body down. On the bolt, up by the shoulder, we see here a taper of 15 degrees, an O-ring sitting in a groove which is larger in cross-sectional area than the cross-sectional area of the O-ring, allowing it to move in response to pressure differentials. This taper at the back sits inside the taper of the port here, which is of the same angle, and when you assemble the two together, you have, just as with the port technology, a metal-to-metal -metal interface at a sh an acute angle, sitting in front of which is an O-ring, which is redundant until there is a problem in the metal-to-metal -metal interface. So the primary seal is metal-to-metal, -metal, the secondary seal is elastomeric. This portion of the banjo bolt matches up with an exterior feature on the banjo body, which again shows a 15 degree taper here, which matches up with a 15 degree taper in the port to which the whole assembly is assembled. When we push the bolt through, that raised surface on the bolt matches up axially with the wall of that tapered protruding portion. That then has an O-ring once more assembled to it, which essentially retains the whole unit as a single unit. It can't come apart now, which is very handy for assembly on the production line. Again, we have metal to metal here with an O-ring in front of it. And this portion works very much like the skirt on the adjustable nut of the port entry fitting whereby when this is assembled into the port, the angle of the taper of the port creates a compression fitting environment, forcing this down into contact with that raised portion on the, on the uh, bolt and creating, without O-rings, a leak-free interface. When you torque it to uh, fairly high torques, you can take both O-rings out and have a totally leak-free interface. When you put the O-rings in, assemble it hand tight, it will hold pressures sufficient to damage and strip the threads. So you have hand tight, an elastomeric seal, wrench tight, a metal-to-metal -metal seal. When you wrench tight the fitting with O-rings, you have both seals working for you. When I assemble the body to the port, we can see that the port has threads 
to mate with the threads of the bolt and a taper of 15 degrees to mate with the taper on the body. And when those are assembled together, this of course in real life would be the body of a pump or something like that and have much more size to it. But for the purpose of demonstration and for the purpose of use, this is actually what we use on our demonstration pump. We have a much smaller component. When those are assembled together, the taper of the female enters, uh, sorry, the taper of the body here enters the female taper of the port and we have metal to metal interface. This will hold uh, whatever pressure hand tight you can throw at it until, of course, other uh, components fail. Um, when we assemble it with a wrench, we have two interfaces. We have reduced from four to two the number of leak paths normally associated with a banjo. Here, on a normal banjo and here, you would have a copper washer. That copper washer has to have a very high uh, torque um, and unit loading applied to it in order to create a seal. We've minimized from four to two. Each of those copper washers has a leak path each side of it. Here we only have one leak path at each interface. And in each leak path we have put two seals, metal to metal and elastomeric. Thereby almost totally eliminating the possibility of a leak associated with a banjo. Standard banjos are very, very prone to leaks. So this is very attractive to a number of industries. We're looking at much smaller versions, of course, for the uh, brakes on automotive vehicles, for the um, fuel injection systems on cars and trucks. Um, some diesel f uh, injection systems require 12,000 PSI uh, at the port. This system is capable of handling that and much more. Additional Zero Leak Gold Plug information, case studies, published articles, or samples may be obtained through our website or by contacting EPCO directly at the address listed or by phone, fax, or email.